The question is that this bill be now read a second time. I call the member for Fraser. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, it's important to say at the outset of uh, this uh, discussion of this bill uh, that there are many terrific uses of computer games. Many Australians enjoy computer games, and although I'm not a big gamer myself, uh, my two little boys, Sebastian and Theodore, uh, love getting on the iPad any moment they can. Uh, their favourite game is, uh, is Angry Birds. Uh, it's a chance for, uh, for them to work on their fine motor skills, uh, a little uh, breather for their parents, uh, and an opportunity for them to have a chance working, to work together uh, as brothers. Uh, there's obviously many computer games in Australia uh, to which I would not want uh, children exposed, uh, and certainly not without their parents' knowledge. This bill reflects the fact that Australia today is out of step with the international gaming classification systems. Uh, as best I'm aware, we're the only country without an R18 plus rating for computer games. This bill brings the classification categories for computer games into line with existing categories that are used to classify films. It makes the Australian classification regime more consistent with international standards. The new R18 plus classification will inform consumers, retailers and most importantly parents about what games aren't suitable for minors. Deputy Speaker, Bond University has conducted research of over 1,200 Australian households on computer game use and attitudes to those games. 95% of Australian homes with children aged under the 18, year, age of 18 had a device for playing games. The average Australian gamer is aged 32 uh, and women make up 47% of computer game players. Gone is the day when the only gamers in Australia were teenage boys. PricewaterhouseCoopers has estimated the Australian gaming industry is worth just under $2 billion. By 2015, this is forecast to reach $2.5 billion. And globally, the interactive game market is predicted to reach $90 billion by 2015, uh, with an annual growth rate of 8% a year. The gaming industry is enjoying Chinese-style economic growth. Computing games are a big part of modern life in Australian families. As the member for Blacksland noted in his second reading speech, a lot of Australians are pretty passionate about this reform. There's also been research that's examined gaming and its place in Australian families. Uh, as I've noted, nearly all parents with children under 18 play computer games. Almost half of parents said they played games as a way of spending time with their children. Over 70% of parents used computer games for educational purposes. Most parents talked about computer games with their children. They had a great awareness of and use of parental controls on gaming devices. 60% of parents said they're always present when games are bought by their children. Deputy Speaker, there's an important need for the R18 plus classification. In 2009, the Attorney General's Department released a discussion paper on the introduction of an R18 plus classification for computer games. That inquiry received more than 58,000 submissions. 98% of those supported an introduction of an R18 plus classification. The R18 plus classification provides a system to protect children from material that might be harmful. All parents understand how quickly children pick things up from their environment. A friend of mine told me about her 11-year-old boy who was watching a TV show and he said one of the characters was snorting coke. His mum asked, how do you know that? And he replied, I know it from Grand Theft Auto. As a parent, I want to be sure that I know what is and what isn't suitable for my children. And I know many other Australian parents do too. The introduction of an R18 plus classification helps prevent children and teens from accessing unsuitable material, while still ensuring that adults are free to make their own decisions about the computer games they play. Deputy Speaker, research from the National Institute of Mental Health in the United States has confirmed that a teenager's brain is still different from an adult's brain. It's still a work in progress. There's great changes that are going on in the parts of the brain in the frontal lobe 
responsible for self-control, judgment, emotions. And some of those con changes continue occurring in the brain into a person's 20s. As the brain, de brain develops, you're laying down foundations for the rest of a young person's life. That's good and bad news. It means we can train the teenage brain, but it also means, as Jay Geed of the Institute has said, quote, you're hardwiring your brain in adolescence. Do you want to hardwire it for sports and doing maths or for lying on the couch in front of TV or a console? Deputy Speaker, perhaps the most positive vision of computer gaming is that set down by Jane McGonigal, a game designer, researcher and author. And she argues in a terrific book I read over summer and which I'd commend to, uh, to other Australians, a book Reality is Broken, that games can make us better, that games have the capacity to change the world. I didn't agree with everything I read in the book. Uh, uh, I've been a bit of a sceptic of computer games and their impact on social connectedness in Australia. But McGonagall makes the most articulate case, I think, uh, for the positive role that gaming can play in our society. She proposes uh, an, a bunch of ways in which games can help us be happier in everyday life, stay better connected with those we care about, feel more rewarded for making our best effort, and discover new ways of making a difference in the real world. She gives the example of Lexulus, the online word game on Facebook played between family and friends. It's like Scrabble with online chat. A great excuse for many players to talk to their mum every day. And while playing the game, there's often chatting going on taking place. Players might say, your dad says hello, knee still hurts, putting ice on it. Have you started your internship yet? McGonagall gives the example of The Extraordinaries, a web and phone, mobile phone application designed to help people contribute to their community. The motto is, got two minutes, be extra extraordinary. And players can browse a list of micro-volunteer missions, each mission helping a real-life non-profit organisation accomplish one of its goals. One mission is designed for Crystal House, an organisation helping children living in poverty get the education, nutrition, health care and mentorship that they so desperately need. It asks players to write a short text message of encouragement or support to students in Mexico, Venezuela, South Africa or India before they take important tests and exams. So we shouldn't turn away from the benefits that games and gaming can bring. But at the same time, as this bill recognises, we shouldn't dismiss the risks that unsuitable material can have on children and on adolescents. An R18 plus classification helps better inform parents of what isn't suitable. Deputy Speaker, gaming is now a ubiquitous part of modern Australian life. Nine out of ten Australian households now has a device for playing computer games. Uh, and I know many Australian parents share my concerns about making sure their children don't access harmful materials. It's important the Australian classification system has parity with comparable overseas systems. Games like Call of Duty warn of blood and gore, drug references, intense violence and strong language. In the United States, Call of Duty has an R-plus rating, but presently only attracts an MA15-plus rating in Australia. We need a quick and easy system for classifying the material in computer games, and many parents have told us just that. While the member for Mayo in this, uh, this debate has talked about the dead hand of government, the government can also offer a helping hand. It can amend the Classification Act 1995 uh, and it'll align the R18 plus computer rating with the R18 plus film classification rating. It helps inform parents of what games aren't suitable for their children as they grow and develop. And it ensures that they enjoy the fun, interactive and educational benefits that computer games can and will bring to Australian families. 